what questions did we want to see? Do go over? Have questions about? Majority threes and twos. And then if you have something other than a three or two, keep your hand up. Right. Uh, there were a four and five. So if you go if you'd rather four, raise your hand. This is everyone. Okay, five, raise your hand. So we'll go four then. So two, three, and four. Um, some of you got a number one that, when we get to number three, a number one that looks like this. It looks like this, where the y-intercept is at one, not zero, and some of you got a graph that looks like this, where the y-intercept is at zero. So, we'll do number three for both, just in case you got a different graph. But number two can be done in Desmos. So if you put the two points in, these make a horizontal line. Horizontal lines have slopes of zero, so that was the slope of that. You could have also seen that your y values are the same, so those would have been on the same uh, line, horizontal line, and that would have also put the slope of zero. For number three, if you have this graph, uh, where the y-intercept is at 1. Describing the linear transformations, you're talking about steepness, uh, if it reflected, and if it shifted up or down. So the slope did two things. Because it's a negative slope, so it reflected. And because the slope is no longer 1, it's 2 thirds, that is less steep. by two thirds. The y-intercept for this one was at zero and it shifted up one. So if you had the other one, don't put this y-intercept. The slope is the same, but the y-intercept is different. Um, so you need all three of those to get that full point. The slope reflected and it was less steep by two thirds. The y-intercept shifted up one. For the other graph where the y-intercept was at zero, the slope still reflected and is less steep by two-thirds, but the y-intercept stayed the same. So whichever one you have, make sure you have that written down. Number four. If we were to combine that terms, you could double check this in Desmos, but you couldn't do this in Desmos um, off just by putting it in. So if I distribute, I'd have 3x plus 10x minus 12 minus x minus 2. If I combine all my like terms, 3 plus 10 minus 1, that's 13 minus 1, so 12. And negative 12 minus 2 would give us negative 14. If I were to put that in, Um, using either all caps or a different variable. I'll If I put in the original, put in add the slider, change it to something, and then put in my answer, those should match no matter what the number is. Questions on that one? Alright. 
Um, let's go through the SLA 3 So just write down the answers as you did last time. Um, we haven't talked about this one again, but we will be in the next couple months. If you don't have it, just write it down on a piece of paper. After um, this week slash next week, I want you to go back to the SLA A2A to see if you can try some of those problems after we've talked about the exponents this week. But for number one, 12 x to the third times the square root of three. Notice I'm putting parentheses in there to show you that it's not, um, the three doesn't go with the square root. Number two, four x to the fifth, y to the eighth times the square root of y. Number three, 15. Number four, two times the cube root of two, not two to the third times the square root of two. Um, I'll go down to five in a moment. Six, negative two times the cube root of four. Seven, five x to the six, y to the seventh times the square root of two y. Eight, negative four times the cube root of two. If you need me to go back up, let me know. 5 was 6x to the 4th times the square root of 3x. 9 was 4x to the 4th, y to the 8th times the square root of 3. 3. And number 10 was the first and the last, so circle those. Finish writing those, go on to the next page. Eleven is the square root of five or one times the square root of five. Twelve is twelve times the cube root of nine. Thirteen is three minus three times the cube root of five. Fourteen is seven minus two times the square root of two. Fifteen is ten x times the square root of five plus two, or you can reverse that. 16 is 9a to the, sorry, 9a squared times the square root of 3 plus 13a times the square root of 3. 17 is 8 times the square root of 15. 18 is 14 times the square root of the cube root of 12. 19 is just 60.
20 was 90 times the cube root of 2. And then I'll show you a few of these in Desmos. Similar to the exponents that we did before, this is, um, when you put it in Desmos, it's more of a check yourself, not a do it in Desmos and figure out the answer. So if I put in like one of the first page, put in the actual um, question, add in the slider, change that to something positive, and then put in my answer with either capital variables or a different variable, as long as the answers match, you know you got that right. If you put in something like Something that had the numbers, if you were to put those in, the numbers should match, the decimal should match when you simplify it. Same thing with the operation. Um, the variables, you do the slider and do the same thing. Anyone need to go back to any of the problems? Today is your flex day. Um, some of you need to start slash finish your tests. So I'm going to get you guys situated first and then I'll pass out everyone else's tests. Um, everyone else can figure out do you want to retake or not. If you're going to retake, you can start that process. If not, I'll come back and collect it. When you finish retake work or you finish testing or you're not retaking, you're going to be doing this. So there are two stacks back here, right here. One looks like a graph. There are different shapes. You can choose whatever one you want. And the other one says stained glass window. Everyone's going to grab one of these, do this, and turn it in. And then after that, you can either work on Delta Math or additional practice satisfaction. Questions on what we're doing today? 